the world who you are and what you do, my friend. My name is Marshall Feinberg. Um, I have a, an Instagram page called Great and Grand Terriers, and I run terriers, lurchers, I guess, home of docs, variety terriers, mostly on rats are my mainstay. But I do a lot of earth work, and I do a lot of work on lurcher in general. I, and I also do goose control with border collies. Nice. So just all, kind of all around workers. Yeah, it kind of ended up being a variety. I started off just getting into Patterdales originally. I got a, a Patterdale from this guy like in Western Pennsylvania. I found him off this like random like website forum because that's how, you know, how I used to find dogs. Mm. This you'd be like on forums and ask questions. Mm. And this guy had this Patterdale like a lot, but he wouldn't sell it to me unless I, I dug to him with him. He, I had to dig, dig to him like three times before he sold me the dog. And he sold me the dog with an earth locating collar and an avalanche tracker. Because those earth dogs, they use like avalanche trackers to find them in the ground. Oh, man, that's that's interesting. I never actually, uh, it's kind of one of my goals, man. I want to get out into the woods with the dogs. The crazy thing is with the terrier work is, is like, it's just everywhere. Like, you'd be surprised how many people have like groundhogs or, or den making animals near them. Mm-hmm. So what were the, okay, so besides, you know, when you got your first Patterdale, was there any breeds leading up to that, or you, you knew off jump you wanted a Patterdale? Uh, my dad's a veterinarian, and I worked with him as a tech for a long time. And we always had kind of like just like like, like collie mixes or corgis or like whatever kind of dog I'd, I'd bring in the house and just foster. So like four or five random butts I would have to rehome. But I got to the point where I, I moved to my first place, and I wanted kind of a drivey dog. But I didn't want a dog that was going to bring too much attention, like like a male or like a shepherd or something. Mm. So I, I got a pat and I just put a lot of work into them with obedience as well as just doing the earthwork. Mm. I got gotcha. you. So explain to me, now I've heard the word thrown around, but I've never actually looked into it. Explain to me what a lurcher is and where it came from. Cool. So a lurcher is basically a... a Greyhound mixed up kind of just about like anything. Mm. So any mixture of a greyhound is a lurcher is, is hopefully don't butcher the description of this. It's basically a sighthound dog made, made for catching things that are just like running. Like in England, it's just like they use them for like deer, fox, rabbit, hares. Here, I kind of just use them with the terriers in conjunction as well as for ratting. And also just anything you, he's kind of shooting after. Like he's a pretty fast dog. My lurcher is about Greyhound with about one fourth with it and pit bull and probably some collie splash into there. Gotcha. He's about seventy five pounds. So run me through run me through your yard. What what all do you have right now? Um at my place right now I have border collies that I'm working currently for goose control. So I got a new dog I get switched out. I'm always training border collies. Mm-hmm. And I got my wife's pit mix. I got my lurcher. And I work with a ratting club where I get to see like a lot of big variety of dogs mm -hmm. in general. Gotcha. You still got the uh, the pets? My last pet died a couple of years ago doing his thing. So my Patterdale Barry was a really cool dog. And that was the dog I was talking about, the first one I got. Mm -hmm. And he was just such a hard dog. Like, I, I, he came out of my friend's yard and shot into a hole under concrete and got himself very wedged. And I, I kind of started digging into him from like 7 p.m. till 4 a.m. And I got him. And I did some fluid treatment to him, but his kidneys were just very screwed up. Like the earthwork stuff is no joke. Like if you get one of these dogs and you bring them to your apartment and you try to have them off leash with you and you don't have that good control, they're going to get stuck somewhere. Mm. Like that's just the reality. Like they, they, they'd want to go find stuff and get, get into a mess. That's good to know. Thought about getting some Patterdales. Um, or something along those lines, this uh, black powder terrier that Steve's working on. I'm really interested to see where that goes, the Pitbull Patterdale Cross. I know other people have done it, but... Um, There's a lot of lines of Patterdales that have a little bit of pit in there. Probably more than some people want to mention, but like how you look at them and how you size them, probably some like one four for less. And I, don't, and I think people think Pitbull, they think of a larger dog, but like I'm talking about really small ones that were into those dogs. Right. 30 pounders, 35 pounders. Exactly. Yeah. 
Yeah, I think Staffy Bowl as well, because you'll see a lot of Staffy Bowl presence in mm. Patterdales, especially sometimes in their face, like in their jowls. Mm. The Patterdale that I need here is, is like so much different than another person's Patterdale. Like when I move to Massachusetts, I'll probably need a larger Patterdale. But for now, if I were to get one, and I'd prefer to have one under 12 pounds. Okay. So explain the, the ratting process to people who don't know. So with my first Patterdale, I got into ratting pretty early with him in an urban environment. Mm-hmm. It's a lot different than the farms, <laughs> and at least here in the U.S., because mm-hmm. you'll kind of always see them. I've been to New York, D.C., Boston. I don't think I'm missing anything mm-hmm. as far as just like state-wise for cities for rats. Mm-hmm. Our, our average sometimes when we go ratting in D.C. can be like 20 to 30 rats. It kind of just varies on how much we see at night, but in the spring and summer, it's pretty crazy. But like all year round, you can basically work your dog on rats in certain cities if you want to. And primarily our club is just terriers, lurchers, and dachshunds. They all serve different purposes too. And that's the cool part about them is like the little small dogs get into the tight places to push rats out. My lurcher is just like a helicopter. Like he just runs from side to side and, and grabs rats as they go. Mm-hmm. So... Up where you're at, <clears throat> how um, how do your dogs manage the extreme heat or cold, or what's their tolerance like? I would say pretty good for, for heat and cold in general. I mean, where I'm going, if, if I'm just going ratting, it's pretty easy to predict. I mean, it's kind of sometimes shooting fish in a barrel as far as just like pest control. Mm-hmm. But my lurcher, I'm not going to make him sit outside in the cold. Like he's not going to work too well for him. My pets are pretty cold tolerant in general i would say at least the ones i had and my border collies could literally sleep in snow like they're <laughs> they're they're very durable for goose control i have to have like super durable border collies right i gotcha is there any other is there any other breed that you want to get into outside of what you have um i think if i end up probably getting a, a larger property maybe looking a little bit more into like the larger type protection dog. If I have the space, mm-hmm. I just want to have like a job to justify the means. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I have friendly breeds to bed mastiffs, So probably be like getting one of those and trying it out. Right. <laughs> For now, I mean, I'm, I'm pretty busy with everything I'm doing now. I, sometimes I also do behavior modification too for training. So nice. I'm pretty dogged out. <laughs> <laughs> I gotcha. So, do you breed? No, I, I do not. Okay. So right right now, I mean, I haven't really had the need to. My first powder deal was collected, mm. and I tried to do a breeding off him, and it didn't take. I gotcha. So that kind of sucked. But my male lurcher, I'll probably end up getting him collected mm. just because he's getting a little older now. And I always, always want to have the space. That's the key thing. In a year or two, I might end up breeding one of these goose control dogs, just because we'll probably have to for where I work. Mm-hmm. Cause they're just getting, they're doing great. Like this one female I have, I can send her 300 yards through a pond and just chase like non-migratory geese out. Mm-hmm. And that's basically your job, you get paid to do that on different properties. That's awesome. If I was picking out a puppy, mm-hmm. for me, the genetics are so hardwired, I just want to see what the parents can do. Mm-hmm. And I'm willing to kind of just take a, a toss up if I have to, but for the most part, like just a pup who's really engaging, like a pup where I can kind of walk on different trains to different environments, they're going to follow me or they're not going to like panic. That's kind of what I'm looking for. Mm-hmm. Like, especially like if I just go to like a little creek bottom with like a seven, eight week old puppy and just have a mess around and you yeah. kind of see what I like. Right. Okay. In your experience with the Patterdale, um, I've always kind of thought of the the Patterdale as a as the real pocket pit bull, if you will. <laughs> um, have you ever seen a Patterdale be man aggressive? Yeah, I mean, I've seen almost every dog be man aggressive as individuals, but for the lines that I've had and, and, and messed around with, I've never seen consistent man aggression. Right. But I have seen Patterdales from like random lines or dogs that I don't know too well, who who are kind of a little bit tuned out weird <laughs> i got gotcha. you so what do you what do you like to feed your dogs uh, i feed nook shook right now 
Uh, I don't know if you're familiar with that kibble, but no, what is it that's worked pretty well for me. I did use Victor early in the beginnings, and then I started seeing stuff that was just a little too weird in the internet, so I hopped off it, and I hopped off it just in time. What's it called? Victor. No, not that. Uh, the one you're on now. A Nookshook. Okay. Do you use any kind of supplements or anything? I'll use Dime sometimes, especially for my border collies. I'll use a lot more Dime. And my Lurcher. Because my Lurcher, he just, like, runs thin. Like, I feel like I could play bulk him to 80 if I wanted to and just have him knocking things over. But sometimes we'll sit at, like, low 70s. I gotcha. So what's your setup like? You got chain spaces, kennels, anything like that? Um, I have my crates right now, and I have my dogs on rotation. My my, my goose control dog, my collie, is with me all day because she's part of my work. Mm. But my other dogs are just created up in the house, and then when I come on back, I let them out. Um, and in the future, I'd like to have kind of like a, a good like kennel space, probably just to give them space outside to go back and forth. Mm. Or at least maybe like a dog door for my wife's dog. So she can just come and go as she pleases. She's like half Carolina dog, half pit, like 30-ish pounds. What's a what's a Carolina dog? Are these, you know, these dogs that live on the Lynch River near South Carolina that are like the stray who genetically are, who go pretty far back. Hmm. And on her little DNA test, she passes that. So I guess if someone had like a whole accidental breeding or something. But she's like eight, nine years old. So a killer rat or two. I just can't get her too, too in trouble or else my, my, I'll be in trouble with my wife. <laughs> <laughs> Why is that? Because you don't, you don't want to bring someone else's dog out to hunt in the spaces that I like to hunt, especially with the ratting and other stuff. Like, I'll take her ratting a little bit, but especially in the city now, she'll go so crazy that she'll burn her paw pads out. Like that's another thing of ratting in the city is that your dog has to have pretty tough feet. Like If you come ratting with, with, with me, and your dog's pads are busted immediately. I know you're not walking your dog. Mm. That makes sense. Yeah, a lot of people don't realize that part. Because in a farm, it wouldn't really matter. It's just like grass, dirt. Mm. The city, like, we're knocking rat, rats back on concrete. Mm. My record with, like, two pads was, like I think, like 60 or 70 rats in, like, two hours, maybe. Damn. Yeah, it gets, 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 gets crazy. Like, it, it, it's fun. After you get past, like, five or ten of them, it just takes a lot of endurance from the dogs. You just keep moving and just sticking and moving. It's pretty fun. That's awesome, dude. I, um, I sit here and I, uh, I try to explain to people that, you know, you can do a lot more with dogs than just breeding. You know, a lot of people online think they're just going to get dog A and dog B and start breeding. I'm like, you don't have to do that. And it's a really big headache. Um, so like, that's another one we could add to the list. Pest control, I mean. The first I, thing you said was, was, was just kind of something that resonates with me, man, is that like, life's too short to have crappy dogs. Like, right. there's no point in like breeding like you just said and having it together and trying to figure that out when you can just see what you like and then go from there. Life's too short not to. I like that. Very well said. Actually, I'm going to have to. I'm going to have to quote you and post that. Draw more people to your page. Yeah. I mean, you... that, that'd be cool. But that, that is really just like a fact. Like, yeah. There, yeah. It, it's too, life's too short not to. Like, there, there's so many cool different types of dogs and varieties and different niches. that You could even do more around your place than you realize. Like, I see people putting carriers up for adoption in D.C. a mile from where I'm ratting. And they'll say, my dog is bored. And I was like, you could literally walk five blocks and your dog would stop being bored. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, there's so many freaking rats. Now, what are some of the other things? Like, uh, you mentioned for a ratting dog, you know, having tough feet. What are the, some, some of the other, like, physical traits you would look for? I mean, I guess in an environment that I do it in, like, you're better off having, like, three to four dogs, sometimes, like, eight if you can manage them. Then you are having one dog because it's just so many rats. Like a physical dog is not the capability in like ten seconds to kill twenty rats. Like that's not how it's going to work. So I, what I like is kind of just like not having to deal with dog aggression. Period. In that environment, for the most part, a lot of the times, if we have dogs that are edgy in our group, they just don't care because they have an outlet. Like they're focused on the rats. They don't care about the dogs. Um, another thing I guess it would be like good nose. 
but not too good of a nose. One time some guy brought like a Britney out and this Britney was pointing 30 feet away at a rat in a trash can. Like in a city, I want to walk 30 feet, kill one rat. <laughs> yeah. Walk 30 feet somewhere else, kill a rat when there's like 20 in front of me. And there's just so many different variables. Like, I guess for me, just having like, if I guess if I could have dogs just for rats, I would have like a lurcher, a terrier, and a dachshund. Because a dachshund can be like five or six pounds and can get anywhere. The terrier can get smashed with whatever's in front of it. And the lurcher's just going to play outfield. I see that set up. That makes sense. Now, outside of rats, what are some of the the other pests that you've had problems with? Um, the stuff that I work in and do a lot of, like I said, earthwork. So anything you can find in a hole is kind of what I'm working for. My friends' terriers and dachshunds. I'll do a lot of digging. I did a lot of digging in my patio before. So I always try to help my friends out and just bring my lurcher to see if anything bolts out that he can go after. So raccoon, red fox, possums, groundhog, lots of groundhogs, primarily. I gotcha. So you mentioned in the future possibly um, getting more of a protection type dog. What are your thoughts as far as the different breeds? Um, well, the one I mentioned off the rip had Mastiff, so that was, like, livestock guardian type dog. Mm. Like, I guess more of, I'm trying to think of the word, like, kind of more like a patrol dog or just a dog to like, kind of, like, guard or work my space as opposed to a dog I'm taking out and about and expecting to cover my butt. Right. Because I'll probably have a lot of coyotes and stuff like that near me. And if I want to have chickens or any kind of livestock, I don't need them getting, like, just robbed through the night. Mm-hmm. I guess the Kangol would be kind of cool too, but the issues of a Kangol is that like someone wants to put their hand in my fence, they're kind of done. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Kangols are fucking wild. Yeah, I feel like that might be a little over the top in my space. <laughs> what kind of Mastiff? What kind of Mastiff breed you thinking? Like I said, Tibetan Mastiff. Tibetan. Yeah. Holy shit. <laughs> I've seen some video clips of those guys, and they're terrifying yeah my, my friend jason kessler he breeds really good to bed mastiffs and I've, I've known him for a while and his, his dogs seem really good with his family so that's why that's why i feel like at least it'd be a safe option and also the dogs would be durable enough to where i wouldn't have to like worry about them in the winter in massachusetts you're more worried about the winter than the summer then as far as the dog's tolerances yeah i, I would say so Actually, yeah, that, that, that probably is it. That, I mean, with my lurcher, obviously in the summer, if, if I can't, like, flat out run him. Mm-hmm. The ratting stuff is fine because the ratting stuff, I'm in a city, I'm in a safe space, I'm near water all the time. But you don't want to, like, run your, your really fast dog in really hot weather. Mm-hmm. I see what you're saying. As far as, like, temperament is concerned, and I guess I would say any pest control dog like who do you, what would you think is hotter um a male or a female that's, that's interesting because i feel like that kind of varies between like a lot of those breeds i guess for like a lurcher a female because it's just a faster build you could probably just get like a quicker dog right but for, for terriers i guess it wouldn't really matter for dachshunds i guess you probably would want a female because it'd be smaller like, you basically want a dachshund to be, like, a ferret for you when it comes to ratting. Right. So, yeah, I, I guess technically female. That being said, I have a male lurcher, and I've always had, like, male working dogs. But in my family, there's always on female dogs. Mm. So, I don't know. I guess it kind of gets based, based upon your preference and just with the lines of dogs you're getting into, how proven they are. Right. I don't know. When I've seen some of the like larger breeds from the bulldogs to you know rottweilers these kind of things i always seen that the the female would be a little more reactive and, and explosive on a lot of occasions um especially oh, when, yeah. when they're when family you got a bad bitch you got a bad bitch yeah like that makes sense <laughs> yeah pretty much if you could okay if you could pick 
your top favorite purebred? What would you, what would you say? Oh, that's a good question. I guess probably the border collie. Hmm. Now, how about your favorite? How about the best outcross in your opinion that you've seen? The lurchers, like anything, just like sighthound X. Probably just like the the ones the the greyhound X border collie will probably work pretty well in my space. A lot of people are, are into those now. Mm-hmm. Are thinking about that, so that'd be pretty cool. Or just like straight up whip it, honestly. Yeah. Or the, go ahead. The dachshunds too. I mean, the dachshunds are so underrated. I've only gotten into like knowing more about those dogs recently. Where can people find you? Um, grit and grin, tears and lurchers on Instagram.